everybody, it's uh, Dr. Bernie. I'm here in Washington, D.C. at the American College of Cardiology meetings. And uh, for a day and a half, it's been quite exciting. A lot of breakthrough studies, a lot of posters that have looked to answer questions. And I think you can be very stimulated at these meetings. And I, I, I personally recommend to try to get to the major me uh, cardiological meetings, which are twice a year here. Uh, I think they're, ver they're that valuable. And at every point of your education, you really want to do that. Stay current, stay smart. And so um, here, uh, I'm down at the McGraw uh, booth, in the McGraw Hill booth, uh, and looking at uh, Hearst's new 50th edition. What do I think? It's a great book. I used Hearst when I was a cardi cardiology fellow. I thought it was great then. I think it's even better now. It's better now because there's more information. And the most important thing that I like about the book, and I do like a textbook, is it's a foundation. I, I can't tell you how important it is to, to, to have a foundation. This book really gives you some back, background as to where we were. Where was cardiology back before we knew what caused the myocardial infarction? Where was cardiology before we knew that you could treat a patient acutely? with a myocardial infarction, either with surgery or intervention or medication. These, these things are historical, and they're not that long ago. Go back to the 70s, and you're only beginning to make the inroads into where cardiology is today. I think the most important thing that I like is that these, this book really addresses the questions that we had going back 40 years ago. We didn't have those answers. Those answers are now available, but they only stimulate more thought, more concept thinking about what else do we need to do? If a million people are dying of cardiovascular disease and we still have 700,000 or more myocardial infarctions, of which maybe 250 to 300,000 are secondary events, what do we need to do more? That's just looking at cardiology as an interventionist. What about all the other areas of primary prevention? So there are a lot of questions that have been answered, but I look at a textbook and I say, what are the questions that aren't answered? You use this textbook with that foundation and you see patients. And you should question when you can't find the answer to something saying, why hasn't anybody asked that question? And, and that's what you need to do. But without a good foundation, it's very difficult to know quote, what is a smart question? Every question is smart, particularly if it doesn't have an answer. The question is, can you answer it? Can you find a research arm that will address this? Or somebody who's doing the research, but is very much interested in maybe what you think about it. So I, I, I think textbooks are valuable. I love Hearst. I, I did before, and I love the new one. And in particular, I think it's become modern. Uh, it's become modern because I think it just doesn't restrict itself any longer to cardiology, but really kind of brings in population and it brings in gender. How important is sex, gender in cardiology? I think it's a big void in what we know. I think this book provides some foundation, but it clearly raises all the other questions that we don't have answers for. And so I really think that that's very big void. And populations. You and I would know that in, in any given room, we're going to have an ethnicity issue. And people respond different to drugs. They have different presentations of the same disease. And so it's very, very important that you understand that these, these differences are there. And what we know about those differences today and what questions we need to answer if we're going to impact on different ethnicity groups and if we're going to impact on different sexes. So I, my, my feeling is that this, the textbook is a source to go to. It is not a stop source. It's a source to take you to the next thing, the online, the conferences, the lectures, to make you a better doctor. What's a better doctor? A doctor who's able to take better care of his patients. Isn't that the end point? Okay, and so that's what you really need to do. S learning essential to be that good doctor. And always, always remember the compassion and empathy that you should have, no matter how critical time is in your life. It's, it's, it's 
it's just as critical for the person who's got the disease. So my recommendation is stay smart, buy a textbook, read it. Enjoy what's in there. Enjoy the history of cardiology. That's what's really important about this textbook as well.